In this video, we're going to look at how we can use S-Frame and S-Steel to design according to Indian steel design standards, the IS-800. Now, this particular model was generously provided to us by one of our clients, and it's since been modified for this example, and it has Indian steel sections. We've applied loads, and we've run the analysis. Once we've done all that, we can then go ahead and launch S-Steel. I'll click on this button, Build Steel Design Model, to get into S-Steel. And this allows us to take the analysis forces that we've calculated during the structural analysis and compare those forces, which would represent the demands on our structure, to the capacities of each member based off of the stipulations from the design code. In this case here, the Indian Steel Design Code. We have various input settings that we can use for code input. We also have a design input. So these two different options basically give you two different avenues. You can either assume that you have reasonable guesses for your steel sections that will su be sufficient for your design and you just want to check them. That's what we call a code check. And then we have the design route where you're giving your best guess but you don't really have a clear idea on what size section would be sufficient for your design and you want S-Steel to basically choose an optimal section for you based off of not only code and strength requirements but perhaps architectural requirements or sourcing availability if you can get those sections on your site and whatnot. We're going to look at code input now, and we can just review some of the various inputs, including the effective length factors, steel grades, deflection criteria, and so on. I'm going to stick with the default for now, but what I do want to look at is under the options menu, I have this design code setting. And from here, we have the option to select our steel database, which I've already done in S-Frame when I applied these sections to my model. And I have the design code that I'm going to be using, along with a few other relevant parameters. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to just click on this button here, the code check button. And this allows me to select the different input uh, load cases or combinations that I'm going to be code checking against. So basically the demands that I'm going to be comparing to the capacities. So I'll click OK with my selection. And SDL is going to be launching the code check. I'll just drag this over to the other window. And after the code check has been performed, we're able to see the utilization results. Now I've had this displayed uh, just to show color coding for each of the members that relates to the code utilization, aka the demand versus capacity ratio. So if a demand versus capacity ratio is exceeding one, it's going to be shown up as this red or orange color uh, that indicates a failure. Basically our demand exceeds our capacity. We could also view uh, with a no number of other settings as well, like the pass-fail status or the color encoding plus the utilization ratios where we have each member showing utilization ratio. But in this example here where I have thousands of members, it just becomes a little bit cluttered, so that's why I prefer the color coding instead. Now for any one single member, we can zoom in on a specific area. For example, let me just identify this one right here. I can see that I have a failing member on this brace here. If I just right click, and I go to code details, I'm able to bring up a design report for this particular member. I'll just drag this over to my other screen. And this shows me for each load combination or case that I've analyzed, uh, what the loading is, uh, what the governing code check is for that particular member. And it just so happens that for this member, for this load case, we have uh, this member governed by slenderness, according to this clause in the IS 800 code. And it just so happens that it's exceeding our slenderness capacity. So obviously something would need to change. We'll look into that later on. Now if I want to look at a maybe higher level report, I can still go to the overall structural extents and I can click on File, Print Key Results, which will show me a summary of all the results in the model. Here I have all the different settings that I can include within this report. And once I'm ready, I can click OK. And on my other screen, the report has been generated. So this is showing me the summary of governing members uh, for each group. Every single section in the original S-Train model will have its own design group. So they're all going to be designed uh, with one another. I can scroll through this and I can see that I do have a couple failing 
instances uh, with different members. So I have some issues with um, slenderness. These seem to be the governing cases for most of the situations that I've seen so far. And I can scroll through this report and see more details. If I get down to the further down, I can see again some some more information related to these particular uh, governing members, and I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom. And when I get to near the bottom here, I can see that I have this table here that says summary of quantities for all the selected members in my selection, and this is showing me basically the steel sections for each one of these groups, as well as the length of that steel section that's being used and the associated weight. And for some steel databases, they'll also include surface area, and it's possible to include cost data as well, although the software doesn't ship with that information. But you're able to use this information to really help validate uh, any changes you make to the design in terms of their effect on the overall tonnage of steel that you're using. So here, if I look at the total weight, I'm getting a total weight of about two and a quarter million kilograms of uh, steel. So if I were to optimize these sections, uh, maybe some can be designed more efficiently, some others might need to be uh, upsized to meet all the requirements of the design code, we'll be able to change that uh, tonnage and hopefully reduce it. Now let's just look at some of the failing members for now. I'm going to actually switch gears to the design input window. And in the design input window, we have one of several methods that we can use to change the section size. In this situation, we'll actually look to optimize the section size. And I'm just going to zoom in on that one brace that I selected because I know that this member is failing. So I'm going to select this member. And I'm also going to, with it, select all the other members within that same design group. So all the members that shared that same section when they came into Estrin, meaning that it will take all the loads from all that group of members and determine what the worst case design member is and make sure that the section choice will meet that criteria for every single member in that group. So I've selected all these members, and I'll just back out so I can see what it's all selected. You can see a number of these members here have been selected. And I can use this tool design, define a subset of sections for study. And this allows us to configure the sections that could be considered during the design of this particular member. So this is showing me here the current S-frame section is an MB200 section. And maybe I want to look at additional MB200 sections for this design. Maybe I want to consider other sections as well. I can always do that. I can also see here that I have a minimum and maximum uh, control or constraints control where I can specify the maximum dimension of any particular member that might be considered or section that might be considered uh, or mass or whatnot. So currently I'm looking at a total of 20 different sections, but I could filter that down and say, let's make sure that we keep this below 500 millimeters. So I'll just click filter and make sure that whatever section we choose, it's below half a meter in depth. I can then click OK. And I can just focus my design on either a portion of my structure or the entire structure, uh, depending on what my requirements are. Just to make it more obvious what we're looking at, I'm going to hide the unselected objects. And I can see all the selected objects that I'm going to be considering for this design. And I'll just click on the design button. And I'll design them for some of my selected load combinations and cases. So I'll click OK. And here we can see after the design, as steel has optimized our section choice. And let me just zoom in on a particular member. I'll choose the same one that I saw last time where we can see here that it went from a smaller section to a larger section, not surprisingly, but I can right click and I can look at the code details. And here, this is basically explaining to me that it went from an original section for this particular member of MB200 to a proposed section of an MB450. So it went up in size and it's sorting based off of whatever sections will meet all of our code criteria and our other constraints. And in this case, here has the lowest weight. And we could sort on other criteria if we had that. I can also see the section properties for my selected section. And I could even look at the code details for this particular member as well. If I wanted to see that, and again, this one here is just governed by slenderness once again. Now this particular member uh, happened to work for a variety of locations in our model. Once I'm done updating my structure uh, with these design sections, 
I can then always go back into SRAME and update my analysis model with these sections because obviously there's been modifications to the stiffness and the mass of our structure when we change these sections and we need to be able to account for that. That process can be automated. We have a reanalyze process which allows you to reanalyze and code check again um, and validate that everything is still meeting the design code requirements or we can do that manually just by going back into build analysis model and it'll ask us if we want to update the S-frame model with a new proposed section. So we can actually save a new tell file with a new name so we don't overwrite the original. Now, if you'd like more information about steel design in S-frame and S-steel, we do actually have a lot of training resources available and other YouTube videos. Uh, I encourage you to visit our website and also the learning management system within Altair 1.